Good afternoon, I'm Mr. Rish. Thank you for joining me for this video. In this video, we have to do a very good demonstration, a verification procedure. You might want to loosely use the word proof. We have to use calculus, meaning particularly differential calculus by both explicit and implicit differentiation techniques to prove the following case. That if you were to connect a segment from the center to any point on the circle, that segment of course would be your radius. That radius when related to a tangent line at that specific point P, both of those are always perpendicular to each other. In essence, you're showing that the radius here is perpendicular to a tangent line at any point on the circle and let that point be P. And you know that's a proven theorem from geometry. Take a center, take any point on the circle, connect it and you've made a radius. Draw a tangent line at that specific point and then the radius and that tangent line are always perpendicular. We have to use differential calculus to prove that to be the case. And prove it, verify it or show it to be the case. We're using the word proof here loosely. So keep that in mind. So our case is not very easy but I would say it's not very difficult. We know if you have two lines and each line has a specific slope, we know by means of the relationship between perpendicular lines, the slope of one is always equal to the negative reciprocal of the other. M1 would be equal to, in terms of the relationship, minus one or M2, or you can say it in a better way, M1 times M2 would equal minus one. And that's the relationship we need to prove. That the slope of the radius and the slope of the tangent line will give you a minus one. That is, they would be negative reciprocal of one another utilizing explicit and implicit differentiation. So the question is here before us, let's create space. To proceed, start with the equation of a unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. The famous equation of a unit circle, do the implicit differentiation of it. And you know how to do implicit differentiation, it's not hard by any means. You left 2x plus 2y and then you know dy or dx would come from right here is equal to zero. You know you do d or dy, y squared dy or dx and you'd solve for dy or dx. You'd get 2y dy or dx is equal to minus 2x and then dy over dx is equal to minus 2x divided by 2y which is minus x over y. And now we've gotten our implicit differentiation factor which I'll write id minus x over y. We have this and we'll put it aside. If you look at this unit circle equation, it's not a function because it doesn't pass a vertical line test. If you solve it for y, you get y is equal to r squared minus x squared root. If you take this and you plug it right here in place of y, you'll get minus x over r squared minus x squared. And this right here becomes your explicit differentiation factor. And we can write that here, minus x over square root of r square minus x square. Now we've gotten our factors for implicit and explicit differentiation by means of the procedure I've put before you. To proceed further, draw a unit circle. We have a specific center C, we have a specific point, let that be P. We can connect a radius to here and you know that's the good radius. And we can bring it down here by means of your vertical line and adjust it across, we have a right triangle which has a certain dimension x, y, and r. You know there's a certain angle which forms in here, that angle is theta. You could very well get, get the values of this points x, comma, y for p using trigonometry. Cosine theta, this angle theta is equal to x over r. Sine theta is equal to y over r. Solve in each case for x and y. X is equal to r cosine theta. Y is equal to r sine theta. This point P is now very well written as r cosine theta and r sine theta. These are your x and your y coordinates of that specific point P. If you look at the segment CP, our segment CP very well represents the radius and I'm writing it there. It has the following points that it goes through 0 comma 0 the origin and this point P which is R cosine theta and R sine theta. These are the points that it goes through. If you utilize the formula for slope y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 you have the values right there. You'll have R sine theta divided by R cosine theta and you'll figure all of this out, cancel things out and you'll get a tangent theta order as being the slope of CP. The segment CP, the radius is tan theta. Let the slope m1 being the slope of your radius and I will put a little parenthesis r be here exactly what you've determined tan theta. We need to now determine m2 which is the slope of a tangent line. The tangent line will form right here tangent to the circle at point p. We now have to find that slope. 
for that line and we'll write our m2 with a parentheses t for the tangent. How do we go about doing that? Well, it's not hard. We know from differential calculus that at any point you have a curve and you determine a derivative at that point and let that point be p. The derivative factor when you are plugging in the x and the y or the relevant x and y values, you get a good numerical determination of an instantaneous rate of change which represents the slope of your tangent line. But we know what that derivative factor is. We know it in terms of implicit differentiation and we know it in terms of explicit differentiation and we know what the values of x and y are at that specific point p which are right over here. Using the explicit differentiation route we can do looking here at this equation right here we have minus x divided by square root of r square minus x square you just have to plug in the x or the y value relevant to that specific point p and the values are right here x and the y here you're only seeing x variable you only use the x values you'll have minus x which is r cosine theta and here you'll have coming into that depiction r square minus r square cosine square theta you know by means of trigonometry and the identity you can easily simplify this and you can isolate r squared you get 1 minus cosine squared theta and all of this is sitting here under the radical you have minus r cosine theta and from here you're generating a r squared sine squared theta which are perfect squares to which you can do a perfect root and you can get an r sine theta you have the trigonometric identity helping you with that when you do this right here you get a minus cotan theta this right here very well represents m2 the slope of your tangent line utilized and derived from the explicit route which is minus cotan theta. Now the explicit differentiation route is more difficult and longer simply because there is more involved in it. When you do the implicit differentiation route it's actually very surprisingly easy. The implicit differentiation route requires you to use this implicitly derived derivative factor which is minus x over y. You easily have the x and the y values. You have a minus r cosine theta and the y's r sine theta. The r's cancel out. You have a minus cosine theta divided by sine theta which is a cotangent theta which you know is right here your m2. The slope of your tangent line which we designated as m2. So we have determined all the relevant slopes and the procedures have been laid out before you the explicitly derived the implicitly derived and of course the slope of our radius which was tangent theta now we look right here at this specific relationship m1 times m2 should equal to minus 1 m1 here is tangent theta and m2 is minus cotan theta and you indeed will find this to be minus 1 is equal to minus 1 and you would be right because the sine divided by cosine times cosine divided by sine would cancel out and generate a 1 then you still have a minus you'll have a minus 1 equals minus 1 and our verification procedure is good and we are done this proof has been completed so by all instances and by all means if you have a circle with a certain center you draw a line from that center to any point on your circle and that would be your radius you can call this point P. If you draw a tangent line at this point P, the tangent line and that radius must always be perpendicular to each other. And here we've used differential calculus to prove that to be the case. And this brings our video here to conclusion. Our conceptual exercise has been completed. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.